Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? I'm Sue, and this is my updated guide for Abyss 491. With the 6th anniversary Epic 7 event, a lot of new players are experiencing the game for the very first time. And that means they'll eventually reach the Abyss, which is pretty much the hardest PV content in the game. The problem is that most of the guides for Abyss on YouTube are 3 to 4 years old. And, well, the game has evolved in the last three to four years, so I figured I would make a series of updated guides to help walk new players through this hard content. And to do so, I'm going to be using a new player account, using free-to-play options, as well as the free gear that we got from the event wherever possible. So, let's take a look and see who we're fighting for Abyss Floor 91. It's going to be Charlotte is the boss, and when constructing a team, there's two major things that we have to keep in mind about this floor. Number one is the passive breakthrough, specifically that last sentence, unaffected by increases in damage proportional to maximum health. That means that Daydream Joker, which is normally the cornerstone of all PV strategies, does not work here, so you're going to need to find a different damage-based artifact solution, and I will leave that to you. For this video, I'm going to be using only free options, as well as three stars that you can get from the game's gotcha. The second caveat for Charlotte is that in order to deal damage to her, you actually have to deal with the mushrooms that she spawns at the start of floor 2. And the only way to do that is with exclusively single target DPS. When I say exclusively, I mean that characters that multi-hit, such as Mercedes, Spectre Tenebria, Vildred, or Arbiter Vildred do not work here, so you cannot use them. Now, let's take a look at the team that we've decided to play. I'm going to go with Adventurer Roz, who is available once you complete Episode 2 of Adventure. Tamarin, available through the game's connections. Commander Lorena, also available through the game's connections. And Sermia, who is available through the Expert Hunt Challenge. But since she's the hardest one to unlock, if you don't want to use her, feel free to use any other single target DPS. As for where the Hunt Expert Challenge is located, in case you don't know, you come up to your mailbox, hit Ongoing Events, scroll down, hit the Hunt Expert Challenge, and you will be greeted with a screen like this. All you need to do is tap Sermia under Golem, complete the quest that is required of you, boom, free Sermia. Let's take a look at how the characters are actually constructed now. For Roz, he has 6 stars, 6 star Woken. Considering Roz is, in my opinion, the best knight in the entire game for PvE content, I highly recommend that you 6 star him and you get him Awoken. Having a character at level 60 with all of their Awakens will do far more than for you early on than just getting strong gear. So please make sure Adventurer Roz is 60 if at all possible. He's your frontliner for Pete's sake. For skill levels, you would ideally like to max all these out, but I am also on a new account, so I recognize the struggle for Catalysts. For Awakens, again, it's already six star, but under the skill tree, Roz is worth it. I highly recommend just autoing in the background, Spirit Altar for Fire Runes, whatever possible, so that way you can max this out and get all of these amazing bonus effects for the character. Next is Tamarin. Tamarin is the best PvE character in the game. You should pretty much always have her unlocked. You don't necessarily need her at 6 stars with 6 Awokens, but at least level 50 with 5 Awokens is ideal. And as for her skill levels, Shining Star is the best move in Epic 7, period, for PvE. So please make sure you get the minus 1 turn cooldown. And in order to maximize Shining Star, you want to make sure Song of the Farce is also maxed out these two are super important for any account to max out um i think not having them is just a massive hindrance like what makes tamarin so powerful is these two skills they trivialize a lot of pv content and considering she's free from connections no reason not to as for the gear it's a bunch of free gear as well as a couple of pieces i picked up from wyvern but the stats on these don't matter as you can see this is a dps sword tamarin is not a dps so you can just play whatever sword you want in the slot and as for the boots just having the boots that you have with the fastest main speed in the slot will be the best. You obviously want your healer to go as fast as possible because, well, that'll allow her to heal much more regularly. For artifacts, I'm on Wanderer's Potion Bile, right? But you could use whatever you want in this slot. This is just to help with the blind debuff or the defense break that sometimes Charlotte happens to have. As for the other characters here, we have Commander Lorena, who is on not even a matching set. She's just on all free dash gear and free arena gear that we acquired through this event. And the artifact that I decided to go with is Special Strawberry Cake, which just increases her damage by 20% here, because we're going to always be fighting a boss. All right? 
Similarly to with Raz, I think this character is worth it at level 60, 6 star Awoken. It just gives you the most amount of damage. Obviously, you would like to have your skills leveled up if at all possible. And skill tree, you'd like it maxed out. But again, even I haven't gotten around to maxing it all out. You should be fine with most of the stuff unlocked for Commander Larina. Finally, we come to Sermia. Sermia, I'm on a level 0 uh, Ancient Sheath here. But you can, again, use whatever you want. Exclusive equipment is playing with fire because, well, if you high roll, it's just free damage. If you don't have Sermia in this exclusive equipment, you will get enough currency to purchase the exclusive equipment from doing her quests under Expert Hunt Challenge for free. You just basically do the quests, get the currency, go to Hall of Trials and exchange for it. Gear is, again, just free stuff acquired through the event, except for these two pieces, which were acquired through just playing the game's arena at low rank and just getting enough conquest points to purchase it. So yeah, now that you know the team and how it's geared, let's jump right into it and I'll walk you through the actual floor. You can't close your eyes. So on this first actual fight against Crimson Ferris here, if you're confident in your damage, you think you've got really good damage right now on your characters, you could just simply like hit auto or just blitz the boss and you're fine. If you're struggling on this floor, it's because of the two adds. They buff and heal the boss, so you'll want to focus them at all possible, if at all possible. You start with the crystal, kill this thing, then move on to the ad, then move on to the boss. For me though, I'm pretty confident in my damage, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit auto and I'm gonna let it kinda go through and just kill the Crimson Ferris. Now, ideally, you wouldn't just waste your cooldowns there, but we'll do this with the handicap. So, at the start, Charlotte here is going to spawn four mushrooms off of her Gale Wind attack. Now, in order to deal damage to Charlotte, she needs to have a debuff on her. If you don't, she's going to take, like, five damage tops, like, single-digit damage. That's not really good for us. Now, she's also immune to debuffs. So, the only way for you to actually put debuffs on Charlotte is to kill each of these mushrooms. Each mushroom gives her a different debuff for two turns. So the yellow mushroom hits her with unbuffable. And this is important because at the start of each of her turns, she will get either critical hit chance as a buff, critical hit damage as a buff, or attack percentage as a buff. So by actually killing the yellow mushroom, we can stop her from getting bonuses. So that's super important, and for me, that's the mushroom I'm going to be focusing on throughout the fight in order to mitigate the damage that she deals to me. Going clockwise here, the purple mushroom gives her a defense break, which means that you can deal bonus damage to her. So if you want to go for big damage, you're going to want to kill the purple mushroom. The red mushroom decreases her attack. So if you're afraid of dying or characters are low on health, focus the red mushroom. The blue mushroom slows Charlotte down, making it harder for her to take turns. Now, this one I don't really recommend going for because every time you hit Charlotte, she speeds up anyway, so it's not really super important. Additionally, these mushrooms, as you're about to see in a second, take almost no damage from AoE attacks. So let's start by focusing with the yellow mushroom. Together. So now she won't be able to get the attack buff. But because she has the critical hit damage buff and I don't want to take a lot of damage, I'm going to focus down this red mushroom. And one of the ways we can do that is by soul burning Raz's command strike so it doesn't go on cooldown. This is going to pull either Sermia or Lorena depending on who has higher attack. Take this. Let's fight together. So now I'm going to take reduced damage. Since I already have some damage on me, I'll AoE up here. And now I'll focus the purple mushroom so that, that way I can actually do a bit more damage to her. I'm going to save my S2 here. I was actually kind of bad for me that that actually killed early because now I only have one turn of defense break as opposed to two had I not high rolled. The order of the shield does not back down. 
So now you see she has no debuff, so I'm not going to deal any damage. So there's no reason for me to hit Charlotte here. Back off now if you don't want to get involved. There is no we can just simply kind of build souls and try to kill this in order to slow her down and be able to do damage there. Because again, no debuffs, no damage. We'll heal back up because we're going to get idle mode anyway here. We get started. I hope you're ready. Let's fight together. So she's going to gale wind here. And we're basically back to the start. So we don't want her to get critical hit damage buff. So we can soul burn and one shot this. I will continue my training. And so we want to deal damage to her. So let's start working on this. We'll idle mode. That'll give us extend the greater attack buff on Sermia. Give the rest of our team attack buff. And let us continue our offense. So we soul burn here. This won't be an easy fight. I'm ready. The spirit of a commander. Now it'll have defense break. So now we have an easy time dealing damage. So we're gonna just keep going on Charlotte here. Listen to me, sing. Let's fight together. Away with you. I will continue my training. Alright, let's do this. Alright, because I'm defense broken here, I'm actually going to go for Purifying Flame just in the off chance that Charlotte decides to target one of those. Kind of nullify out that damage. So now, ultimate's coming up. So let us focus on killing the Red Mushroom here for the attack down. So there's our attack down. Now we can go back to dealing damage. Because again, can't deal any damage without a debuff. Alright, so... Try to see if we can stall out as long as we can in order to kind of get those defense breaks down. I'll actually just S1 here. Alright, so now we have idle mode back up next turn. Alright, mushrooms are back. So again, focus on unbuffable. We don't want her to get her attack buff randomly. I hope you're ready. We can idle mode in order to get attack buff, speed up Roz, so that Roz cuts in front of Charlotte here. Go for the defense break. Alright, it's defense broken now, so we can kind of go in on it. Big chunk of damage there. We're going to go for a soul burn, which should do a big chunk of damage here. All right. Now, there's no debuffs, so what we're going to do here is... Hmm. Don't want to burn here. I think we'll just go here. If I kill it, if I kill it. If I don't kill it, it's fine. So now we can wait a bit, right? We can wait till right the moment right before the ultimate in order to pop that attack down. So we can slow her. Now we have debuffs on her. Okay, so everything's unhealable now. So now, I want my defense buff. So that, that way, I can reduce the incoming damage from the ultimate. And then we could just basically kill this mushroom now. And lower the damage that we're about to take. Alright, so all we can do is hit Charlotte. Might as well soul burn, maximize the damage. Alright, same deal. It's guaranteed to be crit damage, so we definitely want to make sure that we try and burst that down if we can at all possible. So we're going to Spiral Breakthrough. 
Now, because I burned it, I'm going to get an extra turn here, but you didn't ha actually have to burn there, necessarily. Alright, already has a tack down from the previous red mushroom, so we're going to focus on this to open it up for a defense fight. break window. We don't have souls, so we're not going to use our S2 there. It's really important that you save Raz's S2, unless it's going to kill if you don't have soul burn. Save our S2 on Sermia. No reason to use it. Right, so now our attack buff is down, and now shields are basically down. It's time to start going for big damage. Let's see, we're just like chunking through her now. Our buffs are gone again. So now we can go in on the attack down one. We're going to do the same thing as we did before here. Right? We're actually going to get the speed one down so that right before the ultimate, we can literally just pop the attack down one. Even though we're really, really close to winning right now, like I rather would play it safe for the guide so you guys can see like what to do if you're in trouble rather than just like brute force it and play risky. Playing safe is sometimes the best strategy for something like this. So now we get our defense buff up to mitigate the defense break. And then we hit this. And that's going to give attack down. So now we don't have to worry about the damage. And since all we have left to do is hit Charlotte, we just do that. See, even though we're defense broken, we took almost no damage. All right, he already has both of these buffs, so he can only get critical at chance buffs, so we don't have to worry about the yellow mushroom. Instead, we can just focus the dark mushroom to open up the defense break. And then we can basically safely go for the kill on Charlotte. Because we already have attack down on it, so we can't reduce the damage further, and she can't get more damage than this. So we're going to soul burn. And we're just going to go here. And kill her. And there you go. Abyss 91 in a nutshell. Hopefully this was super helpful to you. If you still need help or have any other questions on anything Abyss related, let me know down in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if it helped you out. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I'll catch you in Abyss 92. Later now.